You should work with Elon Musk. I should, and we should go find some smart people out in space. <laughs> That'd be a hell of a trip. The Me search for intelligent, yeah, the search for intelligent life with an extremely narrow definition of what intelligence is. Yeah. So if you find life, but if it's somebody who's got like a sixty-five IQ, you just you, you ice them right there. Or you, know, you find life, and it's even it's a hundred and twenty IQ people, but they're like all talking about Sammy Hagar records. Or, <laughs> you know, life you know? check intelligence. <laughs> I was I was I was I was thinking about this the other day. Sammy Hagar and uh, Guy Fieri represent a kind of uh, Dionysian human brand, right? There is a whole sub level of like. Do Fer- they work? They don't work together, do they? They're like Ferengi humans, <laughs> who's who are all wearing flame pants and high top tennis shoes. They wear their glasses on the back of their head. They wear their glasses on the back of their head. They wear their baseball caps on backwards. <sighs> Chad Kroger is one of these people. Like there, and you can see when, once you start to recognize them, it's like it's like a they live scenario where you're like, oh, that's a Hagar. Oh shit, there's a Fieri over there, and it's a whole it's a whole class of humans that are living among us, and they they you know they look like Pan, you know they have. I'm oh, sure they that, do look like Pan. I'm sure that Guy Fieri and Sammy Hagar both have very hairy calves. <laughs> and maybe cloven hooves. And they just want to drink wine and party and have a good time. And I don't think they're dumb. What if those beards can't be shaved off? That's like, right. They have little goat beards. Yeah, right. They look like fucking Pan. And they are like Pan men. <laughs> pan men. And they're living all around us. And I think, I suspect that they are having a good time. They are living on the same planet as me. And when, I, when I'm around Guy Fieri and, uh, and Sammy Hagar people, I feel like one of those tall ghosts, uh, tall like shadow um, like elders or whatever, like in a, in a gray cloak who are living in a, in a, in a cold hall. And the, like at a long table. Yeah. And the pan people are out like, like smearing crushed grapes on their naked chests and like <laughs> drum soloing or whatever. And you I can't am, snowboard in here. And I'm, I'm somewhere, you know, it's like me and fee way bill and uh, fee way bill. Here's another one. He's another one. The, uh, the pan people. You think he's a pan person fee? Yeah, for sure. But you know, I, I don't want to be one of the I don't want to be one of the grays. I think George W. Bush might be a closet pan. He's a little bit of a pan. He's isn't a little he? panny. Yeah, and, I know, you know exactly what you mean. Like we say, we disparagingly write these men off as douchebags, and they right. certainly are. Right. But there's much more to it than that. There's yeah. there's so much. There's the 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 kind of uh, those uh, those printed uh, shirts with lots of like graphical designs on a button up shirt. Or let's say, let's say a suit jacket that someone has stenciled a dragon head on one shoulder. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then re- so it was like a thrift store jacket that they resold you for $200. What if, okay, so the twist is in They Live, uh, uh, Rowdy, uh, Rowdy uh, McDowell uh, finds yep. the glasses and he's right. able to see the skeleton people. Correct. What if they wear their glasses on the back of their neck because that's where their actual eyes are that lets them Hello. see the other pan mans? Hello. So what I'm saying is Elon Musk and I go flying around. Let's say we, we we accidentally, like we went into a wormhole, but it was accidentally wasn't a wormhole. It was just a cloud. And we came around and we landed on Earth. Banging on the dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> we landed on Earth and we thought we had found another place. And we landed in Cabo San Lucas. <laughs> and we got out of the spaceship and we're like, we're on a desert planet. And look, a village. And we walked over. And it was full of Sammy Hagar's. This place identifies itself as Sammy's Salty Rim. Yeah, and they're all they're all eating ribs and drinking margaritas and <laughs> making like, souve. Just all, all, all kind of like like people who are on cooking shows, people who are on uh, in uh, uh, briefly in Van Halen and Rachel and, Ray, Rachel Ray, <gasps> Rachel Ray. Right, she's a pan Shh. person. You ever heard her talk? Her voice does not sound like you would expect. In fact, now that I think about it, every single member of Van Halen is a pan person. (laughs) Every single one. (laughs) Every member of the Scorpions is a pan person. This is starting to get fucking creepy. 
And you better be fucking ready to rock and roll. No wonder I feel like one of the greys. I wish I could. I wish I had not seen this. I wanna. I wanna unsee this now. I wanna go yeah. back to just wishing I had money because now. This is the thing is it used to be something, you know, you get those vague feelings where you know there's something there, but you, you don't have the time or the inclination to put it together. Now I can't undo this. This is, this is a chart on the wall for me now. That's right. Well, and I'm saying if Elon Musk and I landed on this planet and, and landed on the wrong side of Cabo San Lucas, we might take off again and nuke the place feeling like we can't let this virus spread. Right. But in fact, it's, it's like half the population of the of human beings. Would you, have a, half, would you have a would you have a prime directive with uh, with Captain Elon? Would well, you? Uh, Elon's got a lot of his own opinions. I'm sure I would have to negotiate something with him. Mm-hmm. You can only have one captain on the ship, John. Yeah, and I mean, I would have to. I'd have to guess that he he's not going to be my Scotty, but it would be one of those things where he would, you know, he'd start off as the Spock character, thinking he was the commander of the Enterprise, and then they would realize that I was the that I was the, a born commander and that he would eventually become my first officer. I think a good manager knows what they're not good at. Yeah. 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 And you know, you can use logic. You can look for, you can look to open markets, but at a certain point you're going to need a guy that's willing to make the hard choices that does not believe in no win scenarios. And that's me. Kobayashi Maru. Mm-hmm. <sighs> pan men, pan men, pan men everywhere. There, but they're not every. It's like ten percent. I think ten percent of the people. Oh, you should go to our. You should go to our mall, buddy. One hundred percent of Van Halen, <laughs> but ten percent of like <laughs> the Pan Man band people. Uh huh. You think DLR? DL, oh, DLR. He, he seems like he could be a Pan Man. Sure. Yeah. They, uh, David Lee Roth actually has cloven feet. <laughs> I mean, think name a name a rock musician like. Uh, definitely all of Aerosmith. Pan men. Pan men. Um, oh, the Eagles. Ugh. Pan men. Tons of them. But pan men that have adopted some kind of sad, like, like this, uh, you know, who else is a, is a sad pan man? <laughs> Eddie Vedder. <laughs> Eddie Vedder, sad pan man. <laughs> I got a call to it in a straight beer situation. <laughs> well, back in the old days, I was I was looking through some photographs the other day, and I see I found all these pictures of me in the very early nineties, in my um, when I was in my modern primitive culture. Uh, <clears throat> I was still I'm still pretty much like I am now, but for whatever reason, I have found myself in a modern primitive circle mm. uh for for a large portion of my of my social like calendar and that involved a lot of mud and nakedness and industrial music and um the early days of tattoos in in places other than on your forearms mm-hmm. and of of uh, graphic elements other than anchors. And I was always, you know, a little bit outside because I'm always a little bit outside of every culture I participate in. But this group of people really did embrace me and I embraced them for a period of a few years. We were all very close and, and um, covered with mud. And part of that was that we, you know, like you could not put intoxicating substances in us fast enough mm. but there are a couple of i have a couple of photographs of me like sitting next to a fire pit with a with a like a dreadlocked girl sitting in my lap and like a a bald guy with a long goatee and like pan boots <laughs> Uh, you know, playing a, a playing a flute and dancing around a, a goat carcass, like and I and I look at him, a, pier- a like, pierced goat. Yeah, I'm just like, what the what the fuck was I up to? That was a long time ago. But and I guess I guess at the time I I was trying to uh, trying to figure out what what was next in the world, mm-hmm. and that, that that seemed that was that was the logical extension of what hippie values would lead to i guess wait a minute now here's a question for you is elon musk a pan man 
Oh, isn't he European? Well, he's got a weird... Oh, South African. He's oh, South, South African. South African-born Canadian-American business magnate, it wow. says here. God. So he was born in Pretoria. Is he a pan man? I don't think he's a pan man. I think Richard Branson is much closer to a pan oh, person. Oh, right. He's pretty panny. He's panny. He gets, he gets photos of himself on jet skis with ladies. But I'm looking at Elon Musk, and I'm picturing a chin beard... And it's not hard to picture. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, like he might be a he might be a shaved pan man. I think um, I don't want to upset anybody, John. But I got to tell you, I think you know German accent still reads a certain way to Americans. Mm-hmm. I think it, the much more evil sounding accent to me is the Dutch accent. You know what I find, John? I find that people really enjoy it when you put a plate of food in front of them <laughs> while you're smiling and you go try this. <laughs> Hey, you think you've had uh, food? Try this. Welcome to Chili Hacker. Welcome, welcome to welcome to Chili Town. I have, which I have is a my, concern. My favorite Dan Harmon show. Oh, huh? you? Huh? Huh? Where's my right. bell? Up oh, here, up high, get, up high, get, up high. Oh, um, there was a piece of paper stuck in. There. I, I just want to say, you know, every man has a little bit of Pan Man in him, mm-hmm. right? Because you can't huh? have a Pan Man without being a man. There may be pan ladies, but I think it's canonically a pan man. I'm following you so far. I've known well, some pan ladies. And when, you know, people ask us about this, and I, I don't know. If people say, like, "Well, what are you going to talk about pan man?" Like, I can go to some one episode and go, "Like, let me explain what a pan man is." I don't know if we've ever exactly described. All you need to know: it's Sammy Hagar. Right. It's, it's Guy Fieri. Fieri. Did you know you got to say it like that? F- no. What really? a fucking pan man thing to do. Fieri. It, does he really say Fieri? I think he says Fieri. But you got it. Okay, so here's the here's here's the parts of having a, a being a pan man. I think I'm gonna get you t- jump in. Lay I think to be the the classic pan man <laughs> things. You mm-hmm. should probably have a very silly goatee that's maybe a little long. You should uh, almost have that you can't help right, like a goatee that you just almost can't help. <laughs> no, it's, no, no, no. Yeah, it's not fine. like you're a guy with a full beard and you shave it into a goatee. It's like your face just makes goatees. Yeah, you've got a you've got a, a genetic uh, goatee beard. Yeah, and then you should have some kind of stupid hair, maybe frosted. Could could be could be ginger ringlets. Could be ginger ringlets. It could, could be, be it could be spiky ringlets. highlights. Right, spiky highlights. Some kind of fucked up hair. Okay, and then from there it spreads out a little bit. It could involve Hawaiian shirt short shirts. It could involve jam shorts. You probably wear flip flops for sure. And I think one of the canonical things, wouldn't you say, is you can't get it hot enough for them. <laughs> I think you can't get it hot enough for them. And so you, I, I think you actually have a, a canonical test. You have a Turing test, a, a Pan Man Turing test, which is, do you want jalapenos with that? To which he always says. Pan Man always is going to say, yeah! Fuck yeah, I want jalapenos with that. I think, I think uh, a Pan Man uh, uh, says woo. An awful lot. He's Does he gonna call say, you bro or dog? He, maybe I think he calls you dog. I think he calls you bro. I think he is gonna. He's gonna. You know. In a way, this is what's weird. In a way, maybe George Bush is a little bit more. I'm oh. talking about George W. Bush. He's a uh, like a closet pan man. He's a little bit closer to Pan Man because of his his habit of nicknaming everybody. Right. right. With a kind of like, hey, what's up, Pantsy? Why? Because I'm wearing pants? Yeah, Pantsy. <laughs> what's the matter? You don't like being called Pantsy? Oh, also, 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 um, uh, not just sunglasses. They should preferably be wraparound mirrored sunglasses on one of those uh, douchey uh, uh, froggy things. You should have, think, or, or you wear them on the back of your neck. Now we're getting any, into douche country time. a little bit. Any time you wear your head, your your sunglasses on the back of the neck, you are you're very very close to Pan Man, and I would say yeah. there are no ectomorphic Pan Men. Oh, yeah, like pan, a, like nipped at the waist. You you usually a little pan, bit. Uh, pan Men are typically endomorphs. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to throw that out there as a kind of like, I, and there may be some mesomorphic Pan Men, but I think most of them are endomorphs. You you and, could be uh, a pan man with a Macklemore haircut, but that's a very that's a very modern offshoot. That would be yeah. I, I you know there are Macklemore haircuts. They are proliferating. Yes. They are they are like oh my god, Merlin. They are like uh, they are like dandelion seeds now. Just in since we talked about it, I've seen so many more. Now I see it that's everywhere. It. But I don't think that that is that's not a typical. Uh, no. That's not that's not all the way pan man. I think a pan man has has a lot of body hair, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um. And I think I think what it is ultimately is that they feel 
connected to the spirit of having fun, living in the now, being here now. And this is what's so confusing about Matthew McConaughey, Mm. because Matthew McConaughey is, uh, by all appearances, a fairly normal human, but he's had some kind of pan-man personality transplant. He's a pan-man living inside the body of a normal man. Mm. And that's why I, that's why I, I, I have such a hard time grappling with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't really fit the dominant paradigm. No, and yet, as soon as he opens his mouth, you're like, pan man. Yes, all right, all right, all right. So, so it's Michael Anthony of, of, uh, oh, of, yeah, of Van yeah, Halen, yeah, yeah. Ultimate, ultimate sort of pan I think if, man. if you have a musical instrument shaped like a liquor bottle, you're probably a pan man. If you look at Van Halen, you look yes. at them standing against the wall in 1977, and you look at Michael Anthony and you think like, "Ah, buddy, God, I'm sorry. That's that guy that used to work at the hardware store. <laughs> yeah, like, it's got to be tough to be Michael Anthony. And yet, in no photograph of Michael Anthony at any time do you ever register the sense that it is tough He's at all. He's smiling. He's having the best time. He's enjoying being in fucking Van Halen. He really, really is. And not for a second. He's not standing in front of a brick wall looking sad. Nope. Not for a second does he think to himself, I'm the only guy on stage right now that's wearing a shirt. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Yeah. There are yeah, those times like, when like, you're maybe like, something, oh, something oh, from oh. the chess king. Oh, oh but Michael oh. Anthony's got to wear a shirt oh. because everybody else has got their shirt off. And Michael Anthony is a little bit of an endomorph. He's, he's, and he's, he's got, got pan he's man got, boobs. He's got to keep his shirt on, but he doesn't give a fuck. No. He's having a great time. And that is characteristic. Pan, pan man. man give no fucks. So you don't think I should be worried about becoming a pan man, though? I mean, I really, I really do like the first four Van Halen albums. Here's the thing about Shit, I, I, I like Standing Hampton. I mean, you know. Listen, if I, if I so was sitting on for the Sammy Hagar record, Stanley Hansen. You talk about <laughs> <laughs> Standing <laughs> Hampton, isn't that what it's called? Jesus, I don't know. Yeah. Are you talking about H- Hager, Sean, Aronson, and Shreve? HSAS, Lies No More Lies? No. I was talking about uh, the one that's got, uh, what's this got on it? It's got, there's only one way to rock on it. Oh, that's a good tune. Does it have three lock box? <clears throat> no, that's on three lock box. Oh, that's sorry. also the one with Your Love is Driving Me Crazy. There's my band. There's only one way to rock. Honestly, if I was, uh, if I was sitting on a BART train, on the Bart train. What a On the Bart train. And you were sitting across from me. I, and I don't mean this in the wrong way, but I might Come say up. to myself, <laughs> I might say to myself, hmm, is that a pan man? Really? Just because there are certain characteristics that you have that, you, that, are, that are shared with pan men. Hmm. Hmm. Um, you tuck your jeans into your socks. <laughs> There's the thing about your face is kind of goatee shaped. I I do have a somewhat goatee shaped face. There's a goatee shape to your face, and over the years, some of your hairstyles were fairly pannish. Holy shit, you're right. But I do not find I you know, and the the fact is that maybe your pan personality got switched with Matthew McConaughey's actual personality somewhere you should look at your guys's birthdays yes and see if maybe it wasn't a personality transplant that happened somehow with the storks mm. that your personality belongs in matthew mcconaughey and his personality belongs in you because you have a not not i don't think a pan man personality no i don't think so i don't think you do I wonder if he's riddled with self-doubt i don't think he is i don't that think is, he is either you look at that guy Okay, yeah. so there you go, though. Isn't that a good, that, that's a pan man quality, not riddled with self doubt. Precisely. Not on the surface, right. anyway. Right. Like a guy like Matthew McConaughey living in Texas, right? He should be, uh, he should, he should have been born probably with your like hyper, well, let's see, this argument is kind of not holding water with Matthew McConaughey having your personality. Yeah. But maybe you should have had his personality. Mm. And then there's somebody else. There's a third element, a third person that should have had your personality. Right. Right? 
This sounds like a and Marvel then, thing. And then you would have had their personality. Maybe that's what it is. Sammy Hagar, 67. Doesn't look a day over 64. <laughs> <laughs> the pictures of him on Google, he's giving a thumbs up. He's singing uh-huh. real loud. That's he's how got he a feels. Shit eating grin. That's oh, how what he about feels. P- P- Puka shells? Puka he shells. That's kind of a Pan Man thing, right? Listen, don't talk shit about Puka shells. Mm-hmm. In the seventies, I wore Puka shells, and then in the nineties, my sister, in a gesture of like early nostalgia, which is uncharacteristic for her, she bought me some Puka shells and said, "Remember when we used to wear these?" She's so thoughtful. Back in the, that back in 1976, when Leif Garrett was on the cover of of uh, Teen Beat magazine, oh, he was frequently puka shelled. He did. He was, and he's kind of a little bit of a pan man, actually, when you think about it. And 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 uh, and so I was like, oh, Susan, how cute! And so I wore puka shells, and I wore them throughout the 90s when they were not um acceptable. Mm-hmm. And my puka shells broke at one point and I rethreaded them on mint flavored dental floss. <laughs> so when if you happen to be somebody, let's say for instance, who was kissing me on the neck, which <laughs> happened sometimes back in the day, you would get a little minty because of all the molly. Little little minty like bazing. Mm. You're like, what the f- wow, why is your neck so minty? <laughs> You're it's always like, offering surprises to the people who are intimate in your life. That's right. Smell life this. hack. No, life hack. <laughs> My necklace is made out of dental floss. But anyway, so I got a lot of uh, I got a lot of shit for the puka shells, and the more shit I got, the more I doubled down on the puka shells. Mm-hmm. So, do you want a music bed here? Yeah. A what little, kind of music would you like here? Do you have a little like Rhodes piano? A little yeah. just soft Rhodes piano. If you're gonna do that, or I was made for loving you by Kiss. Just play very quietly. <laughs> No, I don't think that's what I want. You were made for loving me. And conversely, Pan Men, every one of them. Mm. Oh my Paul God, Stanley? Paul Stanley, fucking Pan Man. The he ultimate. wants to know how many of you like to drink cold gin. It's a really straightforward question. <laughs> I want to know. Woo! Ah! Yeah, I think that was a. I think that's considered. To, so I've never been into a lot of cooking TV. I never. I, I don't know. It just never held my interest. And I think. Uh, but I think that among people who really like cooking TV, like I think my folks like you know food cooking TV. Uh, 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 I know my my partner Veronica uh, likes a lot of like cooking TV, and I think that that's considered to be the the good age of cooking TV when Emerald was on, and and mm-hmm. and now it's like more personality driven and it's these like big reality you know guy fury reality show you know the pan the pan man your classic pan man but, but also like uh, just in, in fairness to I, i'm not slagging i don't mean to slag anybody here but if it has to be somebody it might as well be guy fury who seems like a nice guy can i just say like I, on tv i think he's insufferable but apparently he's a very nice guy but, uh so today you have a show like well, the one we're watching or other kinds of shows that are kind of about food culture and food like looking at food and the aesthetics of food. The thing about Yan Can Cook or the old Emerald Show or any of those, or for that matter, Julia Child, was about how to cook. That was a show about, if you like, recipes. It was about taking somebody who aspires to be a cook and showing them how to actually put the ingredients together. And, uh, you know, it's a different kind of thing. It was a different age, but, you know, and more practical in a lot of ways. Uh, I'm just looking at the uh, Roderick on the Line uh, episode for the, the Pan Men. <laughs> 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 Classic pan man. John, one of John's tests for a pan man is uh, if you ask them if they want uh, jalapenos with that, they say, shit, yeah, I want jalapenos with that. <laughs> um, Alton Brown. Isn't Al- Alton Brown's a food guy, right? 